Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, Place of Binding of Isaac Atterbirth Plus. We've had, the, you know, some... We've had pairs. Pairs of runs. What have the pairs been? Uh, one cursed, not unwinnable, but tough to win run. Combined with a run that's impossible to lose. A-M-W-M-V-Y-1-S. I'm hoping we can break the cycle a little bit here, but not optimistic necessarily based on our starting items and stats. <laughs> Hopefully. Prove me wrong, game. Prove me wrong. I gotta say, you know, Isaac, you're, uh, you're not the only dog on the block anymore. I love you. I'm familiar with you. But I need, I need you to meet me halfway here. I need you to, I mean, I guess I could just stop starting as Eden. That, that is something that's within my control. But what I would rather do is start as Eden and then have you give me a run that's just slightly above average literally every single time without changing what the perceived average is. As a result, making it appear that a victory required skill while actually uh, just concealing the fact that the run was actually surprisingly easy to win in the first place. Is that so much to ask? Now I have uh, made that sound as if, you know, I'm being unfair. But we've had a huge assortment of terrible starting items and item rooms recently. Item rooms in particular, like Magic Fingers first item room. Don't it always seem to go, you don't know what you got till it's gone. But anyway, we're, we're below average on this run so far, but we're like one item below average, you know? If, the, if things go properly, things go adequately, it doesn't take too much to get us back down to brass tacks, you know what I mean? I don't know, what are brass tacks? I mean, that's... I don't even need to look up that idiom. I'm sure it's like, you know, well, if you worked in a, a copper foundry... In the 17th century, the blah, 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 blah... That's one of those idioms that it, it makes sense. I'm just wondering when modern idioms are gonna stay in the ecosystem. You know what I mean? YOLO did not stay in the ecosystem. Body him, body him, body him. Let's go. Broken Modem helped us out there. I still think, like, you know, Marie Kondo, does it bring you joy? That's not a bad uh, idiom or, or even a heuristic to live by, but I prefer, if you don't need it, yeet it. And by yeet it, I mean, you know, donate it or recycle it. <laughs> That's... That's a, a socially conscious yeet, okay? That's an unselfish yeet that helps out your community. Well, I'm loving the damage stat right now. As you can tell. This, this run is, is borderline impossible to be mad at right now with how overpowered it is early on. Let's not start, let's not be like that. We don't have to be so negative. We can wait till our first deal with the devil before we bust that out. Dude, I gotta tell you, you know what like the number one thing going on in my life right now is that I'm proud of? I've been sleeping so well, dude, that I'm almost like, you know, like survivor's guilt? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. It's like the game was trying to keep me from going in a dangerous direction with this bit. You know survivor's guilt? Like, you know, if you survive a traumatic event, you feel... I mean, I've never had this happen to me. It's its a legend, and it's from M. Night Shyamalan movies on my level, but I, I guess it's a real thing. Um, you know, you survive a traumatic event that, that some people lost their lives in, you feel guilt, like, you know, I should have been the one that died. And, you know, the human brain's weird like that. Psychologically, on a logical level, you know, you can tease apart reasons you shouldn't feel that way, you know? Even if it is luck of the draw, but, you know... Trauma's weird, I suppose. Um, I have, like, sleeper's guilt. Where... People are like, you know, I, I see people tweet all the time, like, Oh, I only got, like, four hours of sleep last night, I feel like garbage. You know, Mathis, I feel for him, even though I also make fun of him. It's a strange relationship, but, you know, he's constantly, uh, his sleep cycle just changes. 
you know, maybe not daily, maybe not even weekly, but, you know, frequently enough that it's disruptive. And occasionally I do have a night of bad sleep as well, but, like, I gotta tell you, recently, like, I've been knocking out of the park eight hours a night, asleep within the same, you know, 20, 30 to minute, uh, 30 minute window every single time, you know, waking up. Is there a better feeling than waking up like five minutes before your alarm and feeling well rested? That's like your brain's way of telling you, hey, it's like you set the alarm properly. <laughs> Instead of waking up with the alarm. Key? Thank you. Instead of waking up with the alarm, being jolted out of whatever phase of sleep you're in, your body's like, I'm good to go. And it's like when you're microwaving yourself some leftovers. And you go to the microwave and you see that it is five seconds left. You're like, my internal timer is properly calibrated. Okay, I gotta tell you, very stoked to have picked up... Uh, to have picked up uh, Crystal Ball here. Anyway, I, I, what I was gonna say, and I'm being legitimate here. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I feel guilty, but I'm like, you know, I feel good. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it takes your own uh, habits as well. And I'm so, someone who suffered from, like, at least mild sleeplessness or insomnia in my life before. You know? Having a constant uh, or consistent bedtime that you actually adhere to instead of, like... I mean, college is the worst, man. Like, you know, five days a week, get up at, like... Um, oh, we might as well. Uh, five days a week, get up at like, you know, 7.30 a.m. And then most, like, four or five nights a week, go to bed at like midnight, maybe. And then two nights a week, go to bed at like 3.30 or 4 a.m. And then be like, dude, I don't know, I guess I just have like a genetic, uh, genetic? A genetic predisposition to insomnia. <laughs> yeah, or maybe your, your brain is like, please just stick to an actual bedtime, you know? You know what the uh, in enduring legacy? You know, I'm almost at the end of my 30th year on the planet. I don't know. Them, is this my 31st year on the planet? If I'm turning 31, I can't remember how it works. Uh, you could crunch the numbers for me, but I'm also fighting this guy. So, help! I really want you to be killed so that I can maybe get a deal with the devil. Thank you. Um, the the lesson like if, if every year comes with a lesson the lesson of my 30th year on planet earth is really like hey the stuff your parents wanted you to do when you were like 10 years old that's the way you should live your life as an adult <laughs> if you want it if you want the keys to happiness as an adult now obviously ah, come on i'm not a you know a therapist i'm talking about you know if if you're mildly unhappy and you're looking for uh you know, my two cents as just one man. Hey. Health up. Take the advice your parents gave you when you were a kid, if they gave you good advice. And, uh, no, they didn't, they didn't all. But, and, and implement it, you know? Spent my 20s trying to figure out a new formula for happiness. In my 30s, I'm like, dude, you want me to have a good day? Do your work. Treat people with respect. Eat your greens, go to bed at your bedtime. That's all you need. When you, if you, if I get all that done in a daily, uh, in in a one day context, I feel great. Don't forget to have some fun along the way. But dude, I'm not even messing with you. So my my Pokemon Go usage has dropped a little bit recently, mostly because the weather is not as nice here as it was in the summer. Um, but I'm genuinely like embarrassingly hype is not the right word. But, like, definitely excited for Pokemon Sleep. It's a weird, bizarre game, but if it rewards healthy sleep patterns, I'm pretty sure I'm on my way to getting the shiny Charizard. Now, I hesitated to with which Pokemon to make that bit, because, as you know, if you play Pokemon Go, Charizard is not even the highest Fire-type DPS. It, I don't even know. He might be in, like, the top three. But really, you'd be looking at an Entei with a... Uh, Flamethrower and Fire Spin, if you wanted to. <laughs> I mean, come on. Um, but, you know, everybody knows Charizard. And Entei sounds like something else. I don't want to open that bucket of worms. 
Should probably go to the shop first, but I'm gonna engage in cowardice. Dude, by the way, the magic mush solved a lot of our problems. Still would like a fire rate up, but, you know, our DPS is now quite good. Anyway. And I don't know, you know, I, I'm realizing it's more and more. Oh, dude, interesting. Um, I don't think I'm like... I'm, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe this. I think I have a unique voice in the quote-unquote gaming industry, which I choose to be a part of when it suits me. Um, everybody wants new ideas. Oh, I... Hey, do something that hasn't been done before, EA. Don't just give me yet another sequel. Give me an IP. And then, you know, Nintendo Niantic are like, Hey, we're gonna release a game that, uh, measures your, <clears throat> pardon me, measures your biorhythms to determine, you know, whether or not you're sleeping well. It's gonna incentivize you to maybe live a healthier life. Uh, maybe it'll have a knock-on effect and you'll find yourself feeling uh, better on a daily basis and who knows where that could take you. And then people go, casual game, I don't really want it. What I meant was make a, make an RPG that takes place in the future instead of in the past, you know? And I'm like, dude, Pokemon Sleep, this is like, why aren't people looking at this like it's a Hideo Kojima game? You're telling me it's a game that connects with essentially like your unconscious brain to reward you? I mean, that's a little bit of a, a cerebral cell from me, but why are we talking about this as if it's like one of the strangest game, the, the games that's ever come into existence? Everybody's like, the top 10 most strange video games. Boktai! Oh, what a weird game. It uses a solar sensor to tell what time of the day you're playing it at. How about Pokemon Sleep? Connects to your dream brain to give you Rattata candies. I'm happy to be the voice championing Pokemon Sleep. I don't have to be the voice champion in Pokemon Go. It's got enough fans. I'm, I'll just be the guy who keeps making fun of people that, you know, no matter what Niantic tweet, they just go like, when are you going to compensate us for canceling the raid hour? You know what? Pikachu Tim, when are you going to cut them some freaking slack, all right? When are you going to evaluate the priorities that you have in life and realize that if you're fervent excitement about Pokemon Go is leading you to be kind of a dismissive jerk on Twitter, maybe it's time for you to take a little bit of a break from Pokemon Go. Of course, Niantic can't say it, so I'll say it for him. No, don't. You, you can't hit me. I want one thing on this run right now. A tears upgrade. If we can get a tears upgrade... Nothing can stop us. Help. We will... Dare I repeat myself? We will be unstoppable. We do have a deal with the angel chance here. I gotta tell you, man. We're... Can I, can I tell you the... There's a couple of reasons that I continue playing Isaac, okay? One is, I still like the game. One is, I, I love routine. I really do. It's... You know, recording this series is as much about the love of the game as it is for the fact that I love being able to just be like, okay, it's 10 a.m., Isaac recording time, knock it out. And I think it's a, a valuable skill as well, you know? It's the same skill you need when you're working out. It's the same skill you need when you're learning a skill, like programming, you know? Not every day is going to be a 10 out of 10 day where you learn how to write a, you know, a restful API in Node.js, and all of a sudden you got your own uh, random quote generator from the Wiktionary. You know, some days you're gonna spend four or five hours trying to puzzle out, you know, how to write your uh, CSS so that it actually like center aligns text properly before you realize, oops, you left out a square bracket and uh, jQuery and Fontacular didn't import properly from the CDN. But, you gotta do it either way. It's part of the experience, you know? And that's how I feel about Isaac right now. We know that there's a breakthrough coming. When the DLC comes out, we'll get, you know, 
in all likelihood, months of fresh new content, maybe even longer than months. For now, we're continuing to just keep that muscle trained. And the muscle is like, hey, even though not every uh, episode's gonna be a 10 out of 10, in terms of like the actual quality of the, not just the gameplay, but the seed itself, um, you know, I think it's valuable. Just the act of doing is valuable, if that makes sense. And then the third reason is that, you know, It's a weird series that, in many ways, I think has kind of uh, transcended the game itself. Which I, I don't say to be like, you know, I'm bigger or better than Isaac. It's quite the opposite. But like, you know, for many, many years, Isaac has really just been like... It's it's almost less... It's, it's a very hard thing to explain. I'm trying to think about how to phrase this properly. It's almost less... Um, like, it, it, it's not a let's play anymore, really, most of the time. And it's not really, uh, it, it is a podcast to some extent, but also it's just like, it's a routine, you know? I, I see it like the Sudoku puzzle or the crossword puzzle you do every day. You know, even when you finish the crossword puzzle, if it's not a great crossword puzzle, which happens from time to time, I mean, the crossword puzzle makers are human too. Why don't they just make it better, forehead? Um, you, uh, you get some value. Almost like it, it, it lowers the barrier of connection between me, the person making the video, and you, the person watching it. I get value out of playing this for many reasons, one of which is just the routine of doing it, and you get value out of watching it, hopefully. Some of which is related to the content of the video itself, and some of which is just related to the fact that you're in a routine, you know? Some routines can be harmful, of course. I don't think this one is, most of the time. I hope. <laughs> oh my god, it's Sacred Heart. Okay. I feel like we have not had this item in like three months. And it has really raised our rate of fire, which is bad. I guess it's lowered our rate of fire. But then I'm like, wait a minute, is that... it? We shoot slow? Previously, me shoot fast, now me shoot slow. Um, but most rooms should probably be taken out in one or two hits, so I, I ain't sweating too bad. Anyway, that's, that's my... I've been thinking about it more and more, because I'm like... This is definitely, like, the largest lull in Isaac content ever. And I... You know, I, I, I think I've alluded to it, but I make no bones about the fact that, you know, the present state of Isaac, in my opinion, has some... It, it's not the best the game has ever been. I think you can say that while also recognizing that that doesn't mean it's bad. You know, I just think that there have been... Configurations of this game that have been more fun perhaps in my opinion a little better balanced less stuffed with um, you know s duplicate items items that have a dubious quality to begin with you know blah 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 um, I think I think this is really like if revelations ends up being like the indeed the last piece of uh, you know Isaac content that that comes out for whatever this iteration of the game ends up looking like um, I think we'll look at this, like, you know, 18-month period between some of the booster packs and, uh, and Revelations as, like, you know, it's the, it's the Dark Ages. But that's not to say you don't get, you know, value out of it regardless. And I, we're coming close to the end, I believe. <laughs> anyway. That's, that's my two cents on this subject. The series has become more than the game. It's become tangential to the game. It's also become more than the people making the game. I, I think we have to take it, dude. It's just a great tiers upgrade here. That was probably the best mark that I've ever had. Anyway. What else is going on? Um... Not that much, honestly. 
September. I'm enjoying, um, I, I, you know, I'm very fortunate to live in, and I say this with a hint of irony, but I'm very fortunate to live in what's considered like a world-class city. And in the summertime, it's just, there's, there's tourists everywhere, you know? I still, you know, I think Vancouver is a, is a beautiful place to live. I don't, uh, when people are like, hey, I'm going to Canada, where should I go to in Canada? I never tell them Vancouver. I don't think there's that much for tourists to do here. My parents come here all the time. That's because the number one tourist attraction for my parents is their son. I think we definitely want to get... Let's go level four, why not? Um, we're on Necropolis one, okay. It's kind of a slow run, actually, bizarrely enough. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of, like, actual stuff for tourists to see, I'm like, dude, you should go to, like, <clears throat> you should go to Toronto, or you should go to Montreal, or if you want to see something maybe, like, culturally more unique, uh, not more unique than Montreal, necessarily, but you should go uh, maybe to, like, Newfoundland or the Maritimes or something like that if you want to see, like, beautiful nature. British Columbia is indeed awesome, but, like, you could also go to the Yukon or something like that. Um, you know, you get the idea. But uh, I think it's a beautiful place to live. But we have a lot of tourists in the summer, and I am, uh, I am stoked that that number has gone way down. <laughs> If you're ever on vacation, I mean, I do it, right? Like, I'm a tourist a, a lot of the time. I go to other countries, and I I don't really take pictures of stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a, much of a photo taker. And I, I try not to, you know, get in the, the locals' way, which I don't think everybody does. But, uh, you know, you got to be sympathetic towards the tourists. They're on vacation. You don't want... I mean, I'm not even the type of person to begin with that would be like, Oh, please get out of my way. I'm a very important person. There's a, oh, there's a tourist over here. Don't you know he's a regionally, he's a, ch a boosted shiny right, right now? But, like, there's also, like, it, it's just my central philosophy on life. That, like, I don't uh, dislike people. But at the same time, almost any public place that I go would be better if there were less strangers there. And uh, that's pretty much where I'm at, you know. When it, in the summertime, the city is very populated. People are taking photos of, you know, just random buildings that aren't even, like, tall or interesting looking. Now I feel like we're back in, in jaded local territory, which is nice, you know? But it does come with the... A little badness in weather. Do we? Sorry. Bumbo, you should be popping. That's my bad there. It's also, I mean, it's like you get double uh, efficacy, right? Because the kids are back in school now. And by, you know, I mean, I'm talking about middle school, high school, elementary school. But at the same time, there's also like two major Canadian universities uh, in Vancouver. UBC, which is, you know, one of the best schools in the world. And then Simon Fraser University, which is also a, a good school. And then, I don't know, like, at least like nine or ten uh, noteworthy accredited colleges. And then like a bunch of, you know, English as a second language school and, you know, boarding schools and stuff like that. Like, I'm excited that, well, I'm not excited, I'm contented that now, you know, Basically, it's like an efficiency improvement for the rest of my life. The time it takes me to buy groceries, you know, get a table at a restaurant, drive through traffic, you know, is, is lower now. Maybe not that much lower, but lower. It's not really, I don't know, I think it's, I'm just being honest about my opinion. It might sound selfish, like there being less people around makes th makes things easier for me. Sure, but like, is it not also selfish to expect me to be like, oh, I'm so sad that all these people I don't know aren't around anymore, making my errands take longer. <laughs> 
I can't deny that I get a benefit out of the post office not having a line 12 people deep all the time, but I just miss the electric atmosphere that the summer brings. Sure, you've got to wait in line for everything for twice as long, but at the same time, you can't deny the ambiance. There's a certain gravitas in the air. Not really. Not really at all. You know what's most exciting about the fall? I'm not going to inundate you, but it's dang old hockey season. Um, I root for a team that is not very good and, uh, you know, is considered like a bubble team this year. Maybe like a slightly less than a coin flip's chance to make the playoffs. But it just gives you some storylines to follow, you know? The Canucks are like my anime. You ever wonder why people continue to watch, like, you know, like season 74 of One Piece was a, a real loss of form compared to season 72. You know why they keep watching it? You know, because they're invested in it. And even if it sucks, you know, you're part of a community, you get something to talk about, and there's always the hope that it might become better in the future. I don't know if One Piece is bad, by the way. It's kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I have a bias towards shows that have been on the air for a long time because the longer a show is on the air, the worse I feel like it is. Which sounds weird, but I think a lot of people have that bias. How do you feel about uh, The Simpsons right now? How do you feel about The Big Bang Theory? Oh, and now that's not fair. That's ending this year. Yeah, after 22 seasons on the air. Just terrible damage. But I don't know, maybe maybe One Piece is the exception, dude. I also understand. I don't want to get into the anime uh, anger again. I'm trying to find a middle ground here. The middle ground, I think, is this. I understand it as someone who's a fan of a sports team that kind of sucks. And also a fan of a sports league that gets made fun of by Americans because it's not as popular as the uh, the NFL or the NBA. You know, when somebody that's part of the community makes fun of something, you go, ha 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 ha, you're right. When somebody that's not a part of the community makes fun of something, you go, pump the brakes, kid. You don't have uh, carte blanche to talk about that. You're not one of us. I understand. When anime fans insult anime, it's coming from a position of, like, solidarity. When somebody that's on the outside insults anime, it feels like an attack on everybody. Everybody that's part of the community. I get it. I do, believe it or not. Uh, man, Broken Modem is overloading my cerebral cortex here, but I think we're good. And this has actually been a very, very great run. There's some obvious greatness. Magic Mush was huge. Monstro's Lung. Uh, and then, like, some non-obvious greatness. Like, I always feel like... What is this? 85.94% chance of a deal with the Angel. Repeating, of course. Um, okay, we fought about four enemies on the entire floor. But, uh... There's, like, a, an effect that I think people don't really notice sometimes. And that's the, the knock-on effect of having a great... Uh, Spacebar item has just made the rest of the run disproportionately easy in a way that might not be immediately obvious, but Also was it I think it was experimental treatment that just you know launched us into the stratosphere on this run Blank room Well, uh, we like halo That was algae's it's unfortunate, we would have liked to have brought it in with us. We'll take Black Hole into the room. And we also have uh, Nun's Habit, so we should be good to go here. Use it a couple different times. The only downside right now is the Rate of Fire. That's uh, <laughs> fairly unlikely to change. Please body them faster so that we get double benefits. Okay, Let, let's just call it what it is. Black hole, probably not uh, gonna be a game changer for us here. 
There's a case to be made that maybe we would have rather even had Crystal Ball, just to hopefully get like a Devil card or something, but whatever. Not that big of a deal. We don't make a habit of fighting Mega Satan that often, so you know this run's got to be in a good spot. I also looked at our luck stat and went, eh, you know what? <laughs> Probably not going to uh, get that many chests on this floor. Might be best for us to just uh, go fight the, the boss we know rather than the boss we don't know. You can find a way to shoot around the hands. We're gonna be a happy man. Whoa, what is up with your texture, brother? All right, let's just. I I don't know what to say. Like I'm I'm overwhelmed with emotion because of the fact that uh, we're actually gonna have a two streak for the first time in a few days. I don't want to be overly dramatic. At the same time, it has been a little while. <laughs> I was wondering. You never know if you're gonna get back there, you know, once you've uh, left it behind. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. I've said a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!